I am just starting on the trail for the rock wall, moving from the Paint Pots trailhead in Kootenai National Park. It was uh, almost exactly a two hour drive from Airdrie in Alberta through the Kananaskis area in through the Banff National Park and further west and south into Kootenays. I've never done this trail before, so I'm looking forward to it. plan today is about 15 kilometers to Helmet Falls from Paint Pots. I've got a backcountry back site booked there for tonight. And then from there, tomorrow, there's a, a couple of big passes to go over. And that'll get me to Numa Creek, which is about a just about a 20 kilometer a day. And I've got another backcountry site booked there. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do the last 10k trip over to Flow Lake and then out. I got to cut it short and head home to make sure I'm there for next weekend. But the hike out from Numa Creek is only about six kilometers, and that'll get me to the highway where I'll hitch a ride back to Paint Pots and then head home. It's gonna be beautiful. One thing that I'm noticing right away about this trail is that it's really thick and dense in this. So sound travels a little differently than when you're out in the open and the rocks and stuff. So I'm gonna have to be really aware since I'm by myself to keep making noise and let the animals know I'm coming. There is good news though. I've come across about four different runoff streams so far. So it doesn't look like today at least water's gonna be much of a concern. Not sure about tomorrow and those two passes. So I did bring enough storage to take four liters with me and carry it. So I should be okay, I think, for a day until I get to Numa Creek tomorrow evening. So as long as I can fill up before I leave camp, that should be good. Well, this section from Paint Pots to the Helmet Ochre site, I don't know if it's campsite or just a rest area or what, but it's only about five plus kilometers and the trail is really well marked. There's signage all the way, about every two kilometers or so. And it's kind of a long gradual climb. There's no real crazy climbs, but enough to keep your heart moving the whole time and your lungs pumping. Yeah, <sighs> mountains. After that long, steady climb, we come down a hill. You can hear water below me, and I think we're coming down to it, but this might be uh, the Helmet Ochre Junction place, stop thing. We are at Helmet Ochre. I think there's a, it's a junction here. There's an outhouse and a sign with some directions. and I think it's a junction between a bunch of trails and where Helmet Creek comes through. We're about six kilometers in, so there's another eight and a half, nine kilometers left. And we'll have some water and head on up. I am right now on Helmet Falls Trail, heading out of Helmet Ochre to Helmet Falls. And if you have ever done any backpacking in the mountains, you recognize this pattern behind me. Comes up, turns sharp, goes up. About 18 times. Switchbacks. Oh. Switchbacks all the way up so far. Helmet Creek is way down there. I'm not way down there anymore. It's 
since a lot of the hiking I do is solo, I've taken to doing some weird things to make noise and prepare myself for animal encounters or deter myself from having animal encounters. One of them is narrating my trail. What I'll do is I will imagine that there's someone else hiking solo coming the opposite direction. And I want to warn them about me coming up on the trail so that I don't scare them. So I want to let them know from farther back. And as long as I'm doing that so that I don't scare people, I assume I won't scare any animals either. They should know I'm here long before I get to the corner that they're at. Coming down, coming right, coming up. So far, most of this trail up till this point along Ochre Creek has been in the trees and kind of a, a grown in vegetation kind of environment, which is nice and it's beautiful. But every now and then it breaks into these places where, where you can see farther out and where you've got these beautiful views of the water. And, and the, these are the reasons that I think I like this trail so far. It's a lot of work, but so far there's been just enough rewarding views to make it really enjoyable. And it's nice and quiet and cool in the trees and you have the sound of water with you the whole way up on the trail on the first day and uh, yeah this is a beautiful spot to stop and enjoy lunch i will say after i stop for lunch at that little viewpoint the trail gets much closer to the water it reminds me of the trail up to ribbon falls where you're hiking along Ribbon Creek. It's just, there's a little more water on this one. It was very pretty. All right. Suspension bridge, nice. Welcome to the booming metropolis of Helmet Falls. It appears that I am the only one here. What do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six pads. I lied. When you keep walking, there's a bunch more sites. More than six for sure. Some of them you're even taken already. Looks like I'm not the first one here. There's one other group here before me. Well, I did not expect to be here set up by 2 p.m. I'm really early. Guess I should go find the bear bins, hey? Now I'm just kind of booting around exploring and I'm gonna check out the, uh, the falls here. That's a, quite a climb. But, check that out. So normally, I'm a hammock guy, and I love my hammock, and I sleep great in my hammock. But on this trip, the national parks don't let you extend off of the pad in the designated area for, you know, cons conservation reasons. And that means I had to bring my tent. 
Now, I have a beautiful tent. I have the, the X-Mid 2P. It's a wonderful tent. It's light, it's bomb proof, it's comfortable. It's a two layer tent. It's fantastic. But normally I sleep on a Climate Static V insulated pad and I have never had a good night's sleep on it. So specifically knowing that this trip and another trip later this year are coming up where I cannot bring the hammock, I went ahead and I picked up the the Big Agnes Rapide, um, 25 inch pad, and tested it at home. It seemed pretty comfortable, and it held air, so I'm not worried about it deflating tonight. But I'm still not certain I'm gonna get a good night's sleep. So here's hoping. Well, it is 6.15 in the morning, and literally everything is wet from the rain last night and the drop in temperature and the moisture in the air and the humidity nothing dried out and the condensation has gathered on the top of my my quilt so i'm gonna wait this out while the sun comes up and see if i can dry some of that out before i go but i can't wait too long because i got a long day it is 8.30, I'm about a half hour late getting out because I had to stop and clean and dry my tent. And it's still not even all the way dry, it's hanging off the back of my pack. Dry it off when I get to a break. But what I haven't yet done is learned how to take the X-Mid apart without getting the fly all muddy when it rained all and was soaked, so that's unfortunate. Now, walking through these willows in the wet on the way out has got me soaked already. Oh. But we gotta get to the switchbacks and take a long day, it's uh, about 10 kilometers to Tumbling Creek and then another nine from there to Numa Creek, which is where I'm hoping to end the day. So, I guess we'll see how it goes. Just had to stop and check the map coming out of Helmet Falls Campground because once you cross over the creek, it looks like the trail is actually a creek. Like, it's actually a creek. Once again, just a reminder for myself to be aware of the wildlife. Last night, on my way to cook dinner, I ran into uh, a father and his young daughter who crossed a grizzly bear at the food storage, at the bear lockers. So I uh, wanna make sure that I'm making lots of noise today because there's absolutely a grizzly around. Certified. There are two big climbs for me today. And I intentionally made sure that one of them was first thing in the morning so that I was fresh for it. And the next one should be after lunch. The first one is out of Helmet Falls on the way to Tumbling Creek. And then the next one is out of Tumbling Creek on the way to Numa. They don't give you a break on the way out. As soon as you leave Helmet, it is switchbacks all the way up. All right, it is now quarter after 9 a.m. And we are at 2,050 meters. Oh, and it looks like it starts to level out to go around the base of that mountain, which is nice. Because my God, that's a lot of work. A couple of years ago, I was in a uh, job interview and they asked me about my hobbies and stuff and I mentioned that I like backpacking. And the, the HR representative, beautiful woman, that was there said, oh, have you done the rock wall? And I said, no, not yet. And she, she went, oh, 
and like had this disappointing look and now I know that this is not the case I know that this is not true that you're not a backpacker until you do certain things or certain trails or certain, like everyone has their own way to do this and it means something different to everybody but that hit an insecurity inside me that was like well am I a backpacker do I backpack do you even backpack and that made me made me wonder about a bunch of things so one of the reasons I wanted to do this trail was because of that um, I don't know it feels kind of validating but at the same time I also know that it didn't make a difference it didn't matter and that that person <laughs> doesn't care or even know who I am so it's uh, it's one of those things where it's been nagging at me for reasons that I know aren't valid but it has been so now I can say at least I did it now don't get me wrong I'm really enjoying it too this second day is by far even though the switchback sucked so far this second day has been awesome um, the view coming off of those is just incredible and now I'm just tra walking this trail down a hill towards a lake at the base of that beautiful view so yeah suck it HR lady Just stopped to air out my tent. I had to wash it off at camp and never aired it out. So I'm just gonna sit here in the sun, have some water, have some food, get the moisture off of that, and then it goes back in the bag and off we go. Hey bud. All right, I'm gonna go away. I am about two kilometers or 40 minutes maybe away from Wolverine Pass and it's about 200 meters up so that's not too bad hopefully this levels out a little bit as I get there and then from Wolverine Pass down into Tumbling Creek is another two and a half kilometers or so and that's all descent so I'm looking forward to that but for now I'm enjoying this too that's incredible. It is crazy to think that earlier today I was on the other side of that. And I can see the trail that I came down. Wow. How cool is that? I'm coming up on Wolverine Pass and I'm leaving the section of the rock wall and going into the next section, which is actually just a series of other mountains. But there's a cabin over there. That's awesome. I wonder if you can rent that. All right, it is 11.30 and we are just nearing the junction to Wolverine Pass. So on this trail, if I were to head right, I would head up Wolverine Pass. And if I head left, I'm gonna head towards Tumbling Creek and back down the hill to where I wanna stop and have lunch. So I think from here, I'm about two and a half kilometers but it's downhill 
So realistically, if it's 11.30, I might make 12, 12, 15 at Tumbling Creek for lunch. We'll find out. Once you make the turn to head towards Tumbling Creek, it's a totally different view. You lose sight of the rock wall, but you see around this other mountain and you get to see all the way down this valley while you're hiking along the mountains we were hiking towards earlier. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. starting to get the feeling that switchbacks are kind of like nature's currency. It's the price you pay to get to these places that are beautiful. Whether up or down, you're paying a price. Switchbacks. Currency of the Rocky Mountains. I paid the mountain price. Twelve fourteen, and we are at Tumbling Creek Campground. First half of the day is done. Let's go find somewhere to eat lunch. So Numa Creek is about seven kilometers from here. And from what I can tell on the map, I've got a 300 meter gain in the first two kilometers or so. So it looks like switchbacks and then a descent all the way into uh, Numa Creek campground. I think just based on the time of day, it's hot. It's like one o'clock and the sun is beating down and I'm on an ascension, an incline, a fucking hill. Everyone hates switchbacks, right? Everyone? We can agree? I suppose it's better than going straight up. All right. Right now, if I look straight across, I can see the trail with that huge rock that leads down to Tumbling Creek. I think, Kootenai Parks, check this out, you should build a suspension bridge from there to here so people going all the way across don't have to do this. Or a zip line. A zip line would be awesome. Oh, all right. This is actually pretty cool. From Numa Pass. I'm just looking at my map again and the trail that runs from Tumbling Creek to Numa Creek, that's not Numa Pass. Numa Pass runs from Numa Creek to Flow Lake. So I've been calling it Numa Pass the whole time. It's not Numa Pass. Oh, all right. This is actually pretty cool. From Numa Pass, you can see almost all of my second day so far. So behind me, there's Tumbling Peak and Tumbling Glacier. And then we move over and you've got Mount Gray. And then farther back over there, way off in the distance, you can see the rock wall. 
and you can see where Mount Gray comes down and Wolverine Pass goes in. And then all the way at the end of the rock wall, that's where I came from. On the other side of that is Helmet, Helmet Falls. So this is a very cool spot. This looks like the high point of Numa Pass. So it looks like I'm gonna start my descent from here to Numa Falls. And as excited I am, and as excited as I am to be done for the day, I really don't wanna to have to go home tomorrow. I wish I could stay more and do Flow Lake as well. But I'm really uh, also looking forward to a hot bath. <laughs> Well, this is crazy because from here I can think I can see like three kilometers worth of the trail. It's just straight. Like, I don't know if you guys can see this on film, but there's a straight line that runs straight through there. I think once I get down this hill, I just walk that. I'm not sure if it's that this is the most beautiful place. It is very close to the most beautiful place. I'm sure it rivals lots of places. Or if it's the fact that I've been hiking for like 15 kilometers today. Or if it's the fact that I'm doing something someone was disappointed in me for not doing before, even though I didn't know them or care. But this little walk through Numa Pass is its quite cool. I think this, I wouldn't say it's my favorite part, but it definitely feels the best. I don't know if that makes sense, but it feels great. On the way out, baby! This lower section of the, this, the trail down to Numa Creek on the side of Tumbling Peak is still stone to walk on, but the vegetation is thick, so the air is hot and humid. Ooh. Ooh. But we're getting close to somewhere I can put my feet up and pitch my tent. And then tomorrow's only like six kilometers out. So I'm feeling very accomplished today. It's always when you're tired that you make the mistakes. I must have read the sign wrong, did something and just headed the wrong way. Which is unfortunate, because I missed the campground, and I'm like, after 19 something kilometers, I'm adding another kilometer, because I'm a dummy. Oh well. Oh, I see. That way. All right, it is 342, that's about. 21 plus kilometers in eight and a little bit hours instead of 19 some kilometers in eight hours exactly. But I'm here and I'm gonna go set up. It's like a reward. Well, it is six o'clock in the morning. And I've been tossing and turning since about two. I woke up to go to the washroom and I couldn't get back to sleep because I've been tossing and turning the whole time. Just cannot get comfortable. I had a real good sleep from about eight until two. I think that was just because I was so tired from the hike. But I am not a fan of ground sleeping. 
I miss my hammock. Handy tip when you are wiping the condensation from the inside of your x man once you pull the inner out, you can actually fold back all four doors. So what I've done is I've pulled back the large section of the door and I've attached it to the guy line from the peak. And then for the smaller doors, all I did was flip them back. And you can give almost all of the entire tent, with the exception of the two side panels, a good wipe down without even getting in. All right, I am packed up, sleeping bags dried out. Time to poop and get out of here. Farewell, Numa Creek. I feel like I'm leaving a piece of me here with you. All right, looks like I'm a creature of habit. It is 8.30 and I am just starting on the trail. Headed out of Numa Creek Campground and I'm gonna take basically Numa Creek Trail all the way back to Highway 93 where I'm gonna get a lift back to the Pink Pots Trailhead so I can drive home. It's 8.30, the trail's about six kilometers. Yeah, 10.30 if I get there. I'm gonna take a nice leisurely stroll. All right, so it looks like this time I go that way instead of that way. So, you know, the trail I was on yesterday that I shouldn't have been on. There's something almost magical about the way the sun hits a trail in the morning when it's still a little bit dewy and the animals are all waking up. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I've been walking for about 20 minutes and I'm realizing that I'm walking really slow. <laughs> uh, this is a really enjoyable trail once you get out of some of the thick stuff. And then I don't really want to be done. Right? Like, I know the world's awaiting, but this is a pretty trail. It's a nice walk. It's a perfect day. And, uh, yeah, I'm taking my time. And to top things off, I've actually caught up to another pair of hikers, Kate and Jackson, I think are their names. And uh, they're about 100 yards ahead of me, which means that I get to just sit and enjoy this trail without having to worry about making the noise and warning the animals because they're doing it for me. So I am going to savor this. Well, it looks like the trail got washed out. So, this is kind of a diverted version of it. Just had to climb up that and we'll skirt around the, the creek. Well, hiking back down to the level of the creek is tricky. It's a big hill. Whoa. If I were to do this trail all over again, there's three things that I would do differently. The first thing I would do differently is that I would do four days. I would go all the way through to Flow Lake and complete the loop and go out on the fourth day instead of the third day from Numa. The second thing I would do is I would absolutely bring Crocs or some sort of camp shoe just because 
it's nice to be able to walk through the water at the campsites and take your shoes off and wear something other than your hiking shoes at the end of the day. And the third thing I would do is I would have brought a pillow. I think it would have made a big difference in my sleep. I didn't have a very good sleep either night. And I think it might have been having to do with how my head and my neck and my hips were. So I would absolutely bring a pillow. I'll pick one up before my next ground trip. And this coming up is the end of the trail where there's a bridge and a creek and a parking lot. That was a hell of a time. There goes my ride. They hiked out of uh, Numa with me and Reed, the guy driving, is a trail runner. So he ran back, grabbed the car, ran over there, drove over and uh, dropped me back off here on the way out. So thank you to uh, Steve, Reed and Jenna. It was uh, mighty kind of you to let me hitch a ride.